discussing organic chemical technology course in module 1 we discuss about the introduction to chemical process industry uh, in lecture 1 and in lecture 2 we discuss about the raw material for chemical process industry and the third various unit process and unit operation which are being used in the chemical process industry. Now, we will be discussing module 2. In the module 2 contains three lectures. Lecture 1 that will deal with the coal and coal as chemical feed stuff for the chemical process industry. As you know, the coal is the major source of energy. It provides 25 percent of the total world energy consumption and generates 40 percent of the world's electricity. There has been continuous development in the utilization of coal as source of oil as substitute of petroleum based fuel and chemical feed stock since beginning of the 19th century and again gaining importance due to rising cost of crude oil and limited oil resources. Most of the chemicals derived from the coal was by destructive distillation of coal furnishing mostly aromatic and acetylene route using coal and limestone. However, with the advancement of technology, many other chemicals are being made from the coal. Now, coal being considered future raw material for fuel and chemicals through synthesis gas along with its major use as primary source of the energy. One question comes to mind, why coal as a chemical feed stock? Because you see the coal from very beginning of the 19th century, before coming of the petroleum and the petrochemical, the coal was the root from which we are producing many of the chemicals, especially the aromatic, even some of the inorganic uh, chemicals were also produced from the coke plant. So, this was the root and this is the reason why the uh, again the people are having the interest even the coal to liquid technology during the 1930 German they worked on the uh, production of the gasoline from the coal but only because of the economical reason and with the availability of the crude and petroleum, uh, the process was not actually commercialized. As I discussed earlier, the coal is the largest source of energy all over the world and the power production, but the other routes where we are using the coal that is the synthetic fuel that may be in the form of the gas and liquid, coke production that in the coke oven plant where we are producing the coke from the coal and during the production of the coke, we are generating coke oven gas. Chemicals which are now being derived from petroleum natural gas route that can be produced from the coal through the synthesis gas route or through the calcium carbide route. Recent development in utilization of the coal, coal gasification that is being used as a fuel from the synthesis gas to the FT synthesis and the fertilizer feed stock already uh, we, we are having the two fertilizer plant based on the coal during the initial stage of the development of the fertilizer industry in India that was the one in the Ramakundam, another was in the Talche, but because of the economic reason these two units because they were the low capacity that is improved. Coal to synthesis gas that is the ammonia and the other chemicals that we are making from the synthesis gas, synthesis gas means the when we are taking the hydrogen nitrogen from the synthesis gas then it is going through the fertilizer plant for the making of the ammonia and as you know the ammonia that is one of the major feed stock not only for the chemical in, uh, fertilizer industry also for the chemical industry. Coal to oil through the FT synthesis as I told you earlier also that the coal to, uh, coal to oil through FT synthesis lot of the work done was done during the initial stage but only because of the economic reason the process could not be com commercialized. But again there has been recent interest on this coal to methanol and olefin technology that is coming in a big way from the coal gasification to synthesis gas, synthesis gas to methanol and methanol to olefin technology that is the MTO technology, methanol to ethanol. Coal to dimethyl ether through the methanol route that is also getting important because dimethyl ether that can be directly blend with the gasoline, coal to plastic through the methanol to olefin technology because the during the process will produce the propylene and propylene to plastic or even the ethylene is also produced in the process and so the coal to plastic uh, technology already China they are going to have a plant based on the coal to plastic technology. 
coal and coal as chemical feedstuff, these future technology are likely to play important role in the providing the alternate feed stock for chemical industry. Let us discuss now about the in very brief about the coal origin and the composition. Coal is the carbonaceous solid black or the brownish black sedimentary rock matter vege vegetation biological changes originated from the accumulation of the partially decomposed vegetation formation of the coal is started 250 to 300 million years ago and that had taken long time uh, in the coal which you are seeing now in this form that took around 250 to 300 million uh, years. Biological change and subsequent effects of the temperature and pressure altered these deposits to coal. Coal is composed of chiefly the carbon and other elements like hydrogen, sulfur, oxygen, nitrogen, moisture, non combustible inorganic matter containing silica, iron, calcium, magnesium and mercury. Mercury now again um, earlier the problem of mercury emission that was not there from the thermal power plant, but uh, in many of the coals the amount of the mercury that is very high and the mercury emission that has been reported in the thermal power plant. So, the mercury again is a problem in case of the specific thermal power plant. So, for the coal composition as you are seeing here the we are having the carbon and hydrogen apart from this some of the undesirable part is also there that is the sulphur which is creating lot of problem because the uh, coal is the sulphur content the coal is varying widely from one place to another place just if you take the case of the Assam coal that is containing very high sulphur and the other matter which are creating problem that is the silica, iron, calcium, magnesium compounds they are coming as, as after the burning of the coal or the gasification of the coal. So, that is a big problem in case of the where the ash content is high as in our country the ash content is very high that is varying from 30 to 40 percent in uh, major uh, coal residual. Coal is highly complex and heterogeneous substance, coal has a wide range of composition, the, compo the composition sulphur content, mercury content, calorific value of the coal vary widely from one coal reserve to another coal reserve, coal may be hard or slightly softer depending upon the source. Assam coal is uh, much softer than the other coal and so that was the problem in utilization of the Assam coal in the initial stage when we try to use the Assam coal in the boiler. Coal resources, category of the coal resources are based on the degree of assurance that is the coal reserve, proof reserve, indicator, input or the depth range. So, these are the two bases uh, for the uh, categorization of the coal resources. Let us discuss the um, definition of the proved reserve or the indicated reserve. So, proved reserve the coal resource which has been reliably estimated and can be recovered economically. So, that we call it that is coming in the category of proved reserve. Indicated reserve means coal resource based on the combination of direct measurement and reasonable geological assumption. Then the inferred reserve coal based on the assumed continuity of the coal beds, depth range determines the economy of the extraction and the scope of the exploration. Composition of the Indian coal and coal in other countries, if you compare the ash content that is very high in Indian coal that is around 30 to 40 percent, in other country the ash content is less, sulphur content is uh, here also, in, although it is less in compared to um, as country in other country, carbon 25 to 30 percent, any other country the carbon content that is high, hydrogen less than 3, calorific value is also less than the in the coal, Indian coal especially. Coal reserve, words proven coal reserves are estimated at about 860 million billion tons which is expected to last for about 120 years at the current level of uh, production and utilization. The global coal reserves consist of 50 percent anthracite bit and bituminous coal, 30 percent sub bituminous coal, 70 percent of the lignite. Largest coal reserves of coal are in China, USA, Russia, Australia and 
India. India has the fifth largest coal reserve in the world of the total coal reserve, nearly 88 percent are non-coking coal reserves while tertiary coals reserves account for measure 0.5 percent and the balance is the coking coal. Coal deposits are chiefly located in um, Jharkhand, Odisha, Chhattisgarh, West Bengal, Madhya Pradesh, Andhra Pradesh and Maharashtra in India. Coal reserves from India up to the depth of uh, 1200 meters have been that is not uh, 12, uh, 120 meters have been estimated to be 276.81 billion tons as on April 1, 2010. The global coal production in 2011 was 7 billion tons of which China accounted for approximately half of the production and consumption. And this is the reason how the now the coal in China that is being also used for the production of the chemical. Total coal production in India during 2009 and 10 was 532.2 million tons. Lignite production in 2009 and 10 was 23.95 billion tons. Lignite reserves in the country have been estimated around 39.9 billion tons as on March 31st, 2010 and major departures are in Tamil Nadu. In Tamil Nadu, some of the plants are there uh, which are using the lignite as a source of power and as the source of chemical. This is the status of the coal reserve in India, coking coal, non-coking coal, tertiary coal and the total coal that is the probe indicated in for a coal demand projection in the 11, 12, 13, 14, 15 plant. These are the some of the figures that is available and so you can get an idea about the what is the coal demand during the next few years. Uh, this is the distribution of the uh, coal reserves uh, in various states Andhra Pradesh, Arunachal Pradesh, Assam, Bihar, Chhattisgarh, Jharkhand and then the Madhya Pradesh and these are the probe indicated in for and the total and the amount of the coal that is given. So, this is the coal reserve we are having in India. The figures there are some variation that may be there. Uh, depending upon the source and coal reserves in the sedimentary rocks that the Gondwana coals and the tertiary coal this is the figure that we are getting the uh, this include the 456 million tons in fault resource established through mapping in the northeastern region. Coal later sub that has been given to the power iron steel sector is small and isolated plant cement plant ultra mega power projects and this is the total um, blocks that has been given and the letter of assurance. Coal bed methane, coal bed methane, there is a decent interest in the coal bed methane because coal bed methane is an environmentally friendly clean fuel similar to the natural gas. Prim preliminary activities related to explosion of the CBM in India started in early 1990 and till 1997 the Ministry of Coal had allotted some coal bearing areas of the CBM exploration. As of the now about 25 CBM reserves have been established in 5 CBM block. CBM gas production is about 2 lakh cubic meter per day. Uh, this is the block awarded under um, the program under round 1 explosion, uh, around 2, round 3, total blocks 26 area awarded total CBM resources, CBM well steel, these are the some of the figures that is available from the Ministry of uh, Coal. Types of the coal, because we are having the different types of the coal and the coal is classified into various grades based on the composition, calorific value and degree of the qualification that has occurred during its formation. Coal may be also classified as hard or soft coal, low sulfur, high sulfur coal. Coal may be also classified in rock types based on the petrological components known as martial. Based on the martial content, coal may be classified clarine, durane, fusion, and the vitrine. One general classification of the coal that is 
uh, everywhere that is given in the form of the beet, lignite, subbituminous, anthracite, coal like that. So, we will be discussing about the classification, general classification that is given. We will find the peat is the precursor of the coal form. In the initial it is in the form of the peat and from conversion is taking from, from the peat to lignite and lignite subbituminous to bituminous and then the anthracite. So, uh, peat is the precursor of the coal form. Lignite with a further increase in the temperature during the coal formation, peat is converted to lignite. Lignite is considered as uh, immature coal. Lignite are brownish color, soft, low carophilic value. It is compact in texture. Subbituminous coal are black colored and are more homogeneous in appearance and their properties range from lignite to those bituminous coal. Bituminous coal is the usually black with the high carbon content and calorific value. Anthracite coal is highest strength coal, is a harder glassy black coal and highest content of the carbon and calorific value. Anthracite coal is the best suited for making metallurgical coal, for gasification to produce synthesis gas and for combustion as fuel for power generation. The S content is also low. Graphite is the highest strength and is the uh, is difficult to lignite, ignite. Sorry. This is the typical coal characteristic in selected Indian power plants compared to selected Chinese and the U.S. coal uh, composition of the carbon, hydrogen, nitrogen. Uh, you see the uh, carbon content that may be the around 25 to 62 in China. So this is the one of the advantage in case of the China because the carbon content that is very high. Selection of the coal for various application depends on its composition and carbon content, calorific value, moisture content, ash content, composition of the ash, fusion temperature of ash, cooking quality, sulphur content. Assessment of the coal quality. Coal quality plays an important role in the efficient utilization as fuel and for gasification. It should have high calorific value, high carbon content, with low ash content, it is always desirable, otherwise the whole economy of the process that will um, be affected. Low sulphur content, low moisture, low carb. The quality of the coal, coal depends upon its rank. The coal rank is arranged in the ascending order that the lignite, subbituminous, bituminous coal and the anthracite. Coal quality can be assessed by proximate because these are the two methods that we are using for the assessment of the coal quality, proximate and the ultimate analysis and the calorific value. Proximate analysis involves the determination of the moisture, volatile matter, ash and the fixed carbon ultimate analysis involves determination of the carbon and hydrogen, nitrogen, sulphur, oxygen, calorific value, the lower calorific value, higher calorific value, these are the or grass calorific value, these are the some of the measurement of the calorific value and then the useful heating value. Coal as a fuel because the as I told you earlier also major portion of the coal we are using as a fuel and the for the power generation. But fuel, coal other routes are also available that coal can be used as a liquid fuel also. Coal accounts for the 53 percent of the commercial energy sources in India which is high compared to the world average of 30 percent. The Alliance plant project India's coal demand to grow at 97 percent per annum against 5.7 percent during the 10th plan almost two fold increase. The commercial coal in India is mainly consumed by the power sector, steel sector and cement. So, you can say the major share is the power plants, steel plant and the cement. Uh, allocation of the coal blocks to the private uh, companies for the power sector, 20 blocks, iron, steel, small and isolated cement plants and ultra mega power project. Now we will be discussing about the coal as a chemical feed stock, why the importance of the coal as a the chemical feed stock, because you see the, uh, the coal originally was utilized as a fuel for the 
production of the even the gases you must be knowing about the producer gas town gas blue gas these were the some of the uh, through the gasification route that was being put many of the petrochemicals now derived from the petroleum natural gas was earlier derived from the coal and especially from the cocoa bean plants because the aromatics uh, earlier benzene taline xylene the aromatics and a large number of the other organic uh, uh, chemicals are present in in the cocoa bean gases to we are getting either through the um, coal tar distillation or the separation of the benzene and so these are the that was a important source of the aromatics during this only thing that in case of the um, cocoa bean plant the yield of the um, aromatics that is comparatively low with the starting of the cocoa bean plants it became source of organic and some inorganic chemicals because during the um, uh, the cocoa bean plants are the cocoa bean gases they also contain the ammonia and that ammonia that is being utilized by steel plants for making of the either ammonium sulfate or the ammonium uh, nitrate coal tar from the cocoa bean plants continues to be the source of aromatics naphthalene and other valuable aromatics like pyridine picoline quinoline this is the only the uh, selected list the important active the aromatic apart from the large number of the aromatics are present in the uh, from the coal tar that we are getting in the from the cocoa bean plant before coming of the petrochemical production large number of the organic chemicals were produced from the acetylene produced from the calcium carbide route in which coal was a important feed stock China has come in a big way for production of the chemicals from the coal because of the huge coal reserves and the better quality of the coal they are having. With the rising cost of the crude oil and dwindling crude oil reserves, coal has again received attention all over the world to utilize coal as an alternative, alternative source of chemical feed stock. Not only in the developing country, in the developed country, but also in India we are working to utilize and the coal for the production of the chemicals through the gasification route. Various routes for the production of the organic and inorganic chemicals, coal carbonization and the coal tar distillation. Coal gasification, use of synthesis gas as feed stock for ammonia production, coal liquefaction by hydrogenation, acetylene from the calcium carbide. These are the some of the technology which has come during the recent year and getting importance in utilization of the coal that is the coal to methanol technology because that is the in, in intermediate is the also of course the production of the synthesis gas and from the synthesis gas to methanol. Coal to olefin technology because the methanol to olefin technology or coal to olefin technology because again it is the from the coal to methanol and methanol to olefin. Coal to plastic this is also the from the coal to olefin and these olefin are being used for the making of the plastic. Already China they are going to have a plant based on the coal for the production of the plastic. Acetylene from the calcium carbide made from the lime and the coal and the various chemicals from the acetylene. They, we are getting a large number of the uh, chemicals from the acetylene which were earlier manufactured from the uh, petrochemical route. Now you see the, this is the uh, how the various process involved and what are the actually the products we are getting and the various coal chemicals a long list is there. Coal, coal carbonization, high temperature, uh, low temperature carbonization because two types of the carbonization we are taking and uh, we are getting the coke and the gases and the coal tar that we are using for the production of the your various actually the inorganic and organic compound. Ammonium sulphate that is one of the very important uh, part of the any steel making plant because in many of the steel plants they are making the ammonium sulphate or ammonium nitrate, pyridine based ammonium thiocyanate fuel gas, then the solvent naphtha, benzene, taline, xylene, indine all this actually cyclopentanine from the light or the from tile, pitch coke, rotor crude naphthalene because naphthalene earlier it was the root for making of the thalic anhydride. Now we are making the thalic anhydride through the orthogyalin route. 
and then the coal gasification of course, the synthesis gas and through the synthesis gas ammonia, methanol, oxosynthesis, fissure trough synthesis conversion, tar and oils for the phenols and the cresols. Coal based fertilizer plant because as I told you the coal that has been a very important source for this manufacture of the synthesis gas and the coal gasification use of the synthesis gas as feed stock for production of the ammonia has again received attention because two units we are having earlier uh, and we started the manufacture of the ammonia in the video at the our Ramakundan and the Telcher plant of the FCI uh, which was uh, later on closed because of the um, um, because large number of the uh, fertilizer plant they came based on the natural gas or the naphtha and they were more economical. So, partial oxidation of the coal is used for production of synthesis gas and ammonia, CO from the pars partial oxidation is converted to CO2 which is used for the urea manufacture. That is the process we are using in case of the um, ammonia manufacture and urea manufacture. Synthesis gas is used as chemical feed stock for production of large number of the chemicals. Coal gasification that has become one of the important source for producing fuel and the synthesis gas. Coal gasification production of the fuel from fissure trough synthesis getting significant attention during recent years. Coal gasification production of synthesis gas is now considered to be a major potential on purpose source of commodity petrochemicals which are now being produced through the uh, crude oil route or from the petroleum gas. Coal gasification, the cost of the coal and higher cost of the chemicals derived from the coal has been major constant in its utilization as substitute of the petroleum and natural gas because the uh, synthesis gas which we are getting from the naphtha or the natural gas is much cheaper. Even the product cost of production if you compare uh, the fertilizer plants which are based on the coal and the fertilizer plant based on the natural gas um, that is the cost is more in case of the coal than the natural gas. It is just in the descending order if you take the natural gas, then naphtha, then the coal. So, the much higher cost of production is there in case of the coal and especially in Indian condition because of the high S content that is also one of the reason for the high cost. Uh, this is in brief about the actually the various products which are getting from the synthesis gas and so the methane, natural gas and naphtha you are seeing, but one source from the coal you see the from the coal because this actually the various uh, product from the synthesis gas that will be discussing while discussing about the um, petrochemical processes in the synthesis gas and chemical. But in brief here is just you can see the from the coal gasification route you will be getting the synthesis gas and from the synthesis gas a large number of the product chemicals that can be generated at the methanol, methanol to formaldehyde, acetic acid, dimethyl tetyl, MTB, solvent, chloromethane, fuel, uh, because the methanol blend that can be also there. Now, the methanol is coming in a big, big way in the um, as a fuel cell. The production of this UNS2 that is the raw material for the formaldehyde, acetic acid, ethylene hydrogen and nitrogen again this is also called sometimes synthesis gas and this is for the production of the uh, ammonia and the urea. Hydrogen that you can separate from the CO2 after conversion of the CO2 to CO2 and that CO2 that is being used in the fertilizer plant or that will be sometimes it is creating problem gasification or the even in case of the starving because during the production of the hydrogen about 10 tons of the CO2 is also produced. If you are not having the use of the CO2 in the process, then that will create problem. CO based on the CO, these are the some of the chemicals acetic acid, acetic chloride, propionic acid, uh, acrylic acid, these are the some of the major actually the um, chemicals which are producing from the CO or the synthesis gas. Coal conversion technology, coal gasification coal liquefaction that may be direct liquefaction or the solvent extraction where the we are adding the solvent and hydrogen indirect liquefaction. Fissure top synthesis that may be again high temperature and low temperature, carbonization, pyrolysis of the for 
scoop making. As I told you earlier also that the calcium carbide and acetylene that was the major source of making many of the chemicals are now we called the petrochemical because there was no petrochemical. If you see the total when we started the petrochemical refining, it was in the beginning of the 19th century, it was the 1920 that some of the petrochemical we recovered from the refined. So, earlier before coming of the um, petrochemical complex, it was the calcium carbide and from the calcium carbide to acetylene and acetylene that was being used for the manufacture of large number of the chemicals. So, this is the process how the uh, calcium carbide and calcium carbide to um, acetylene uh, production is there from after adding the water you are producing um, acetylene and this CO again we are regen. These are the some of the product we are getting from the acetylene vinyl chloride, polyvinyl chloride, acrylonated acrylic fiber because earlier when the, uh, the cracker plant was not there because now we are making the vinyl chloride from the ethylene which we are getting from the cracker plant. Earlier it was the vinyl chloride from the acetylene root that was being used for the uh, polyvinyl chloride and now still one plant serum chemicals and fertilizer at Kota in India, they are uh, using the acetylene root for production of the vinyl chloride and polyvinyl chloride. Acrylic fiber again, acrylic fiber was uh, because acrylonitrile that was made from the acetylene root and so the uh, acrylonitrile produced from the acetylene that was being used earlier for the acrylic fiber, but now acrylonitrile we are having uh, with the coming of the propylene now we are making to the petrochemical. Vinyl alcohol, vinyl fluoride, vinylidine chloride, acrylic acid, methyl methylacrylate, acetaldehyde. Acetaldehyde again because uh, normally we are making through the ethylene or the alcohol route, but earlier it was through the acetylene route technology available. Vinyl ethers, 1,4 butadienol, chloropene. For the chloropene, also the acetylene route is available, chlorinated solvent. Coal to methanol technology, the process involves the production of synthesis gas from coal via partial oxidation followed by conversion of the synthesis gas to methanol. This is the technology that is being used for the production of the methanol. Again, we will be discussing in detail about the production of the methanol from the synthesis gas uh, while discussing about the petrochemicals in module 6, module 7, sorry. Coal to elephant technology, methanol from synthesis gas from coal gasification can be converted to dimethyl ether using y function catalyst which can be used as a gasoline blend or methanol can be converted to olefin by MTO process. This, this process produces ethylene and ripropylene olefin synthesis from synthesis gas via dimethyl ether to olefin process that is also SGTO that, that is also available. Olefin produced from the coal root can be used for the manufacture of polyolefins and uh, that is the polyolefin plastic. Propylene can be manufactured from methanol to olefin technology. Propylene from MTO can be used for pro polypropylene. Coal to plastic technology based on coal is getting important. China is already going to have one commercial plant for making uh, polyethylene and the polypropylene from the coal root. Major constant in coal to chemical variation in the coal quality, which affect the efficiency and the economics of the gasification. Changes in the syngas composition due to variation of the coal quality, because you see the coal quality that is varying very widely from one place to another, one source to another source, and so the quality even the just you take the case of Assam coal, although it is having high carbon, but very high sulfur content in it. Some of the coal are having very high ash content. So, changes in the syngas composition with the variation in the coal quality is there. High ash content of the coal as in case of India, high sulfur content, impurities in the coal may be detrimental as they may affect the catalyst and the process because the catalyst poisoning that may be there because of the some of the impurities which are present in the coal. Environmental considerations such as sulfur content and CO2 
emission which is there in case of the uh, your uh, coal gasification route. Mercury emission that is one of the another problem that we are having in case of the coal because some of the coal they are having the high mercury and so because of the mercury emission. Now, that has been made mandatory for all the thermal power plant to monitor the mercury content of the coal. So, this was about the coal and the coal as the chemical feed stock. In the lecture 2 of the module 2, we will be discussing about the co coben plant because that was the starting of the production of the chemicals which now we are seeing through the petrochemical route.